What's up, YouTube? Dylan here with Dylan Tom Espresso Bar. Welcome to another episode of Late Night Latte Art with Dylan Licka. Today, we are going to be pulling our shots of espresso. Uh, we're going to do two single shots, and we are also going to compare the two different latte art jugs. Which one is better? Which one do I prefer? Uh, what's better for me may not be better for you, but I will let you know which one I believe is easier to use. So without further ado, let's get to making some nice espresso and latte art. All right. First, you're gonna take your portafilter out, put it down here for now. You're going to replace this. All right, so I'm using the Crema dosing cup and I am not using the Niche dosing cup. And the only reason I am using this one as opposed to the Niche is because if you guys are not familiar, uh, the Niche's dosing cup is a 58 millimeter dosing cup. And the problem with that uh, for Bro Barista Express owners is the fact that we have a 53 millimeter portafilter basket. So what that means is this is way too big and this is way too small and it would just will not work. The only way this cup will work, if you guys are interested in a niche and you guys do not have a dosing funnel from Crema or any other made 3D dosing funnel, uh, is you could use this that I bought off Amazon. I think it's about $19.99. You can put that on there and then dose your beans into the cup and just pour it in here. Mess free, still works very well. I just like the... Uh, pretty easy transition from the cup straight to the port filter and then just pretty much is makes workflow a lot faster and a lot easier so that's what we're going to be doing today i just wanted to explain why i'm not using the niche cup and for those of you who have a bravo barista express and want a niche so without further ado let's get to pulling the shots all right so we're just going to go ahead and dose out I'm going to do 17.5 grams. I've been doing that lately. I think that's uh, the best recipe so far that I have found. And I think that taste is so much better with 17 grams on my, with my taste buds anyways. It may be different for yours. Everyone's palate is different. So we're at 17.3. Let's try to hit that 17.5. There we go. So just going to... Go ahead and put that inside the grinder. My lovely wife. Let me go ahead and show you guys really fast. Say hi. She wanted hi. to get uh, dressed up before she was on camera, but I kind of surprised her. <laughs> so she's gonna go ahead and I'm gonna watch the beans as they go through. I really love this and the new plastic insert that the niche put into their new and approved grinders is fantastic. There's hardly any bean hopping in there. You may see a little, but not much at all. And like I always do, so I will show you guys this first. So we had 17.5 grams that we dosed into the cup. So I'm going to show you guys why I do tap the grinder just a little bit when I'm grinding my beans into my canister. And it's because it is, they say zero retention grinder. However, it does retain about 0.1 to 0.2, which is what they say, maybe sometimes 0.3 but I want to be as accurate as possible when dosing. So I want to get what I dose in to what comes out. So I'll put this on here and if you guys can see, so this scale is also off. So I'm actually ordering a scale. So this thing I have 18.8 grams, which is not right because I didn't start out with 18.8 grams, but I do have a scale coming. Uh, I bought a, uh, a Kaya lunar scale. So that will be coming in in about a week or so i'm buying it off of or i bought it off seattle coffee gear but uh without being able to show you guys i'll go ahead and just dose it in so this is why this dosing funnel or dosing cup is so much easier because you can just flip it straight in there and all the grounds are just transferred right over there pretty easy and as of static everyone wants to know if there's any static that's involved in here and i don't see any beans left over so i would say for static pretty it's pretty uh pretty good so no static there now we're just going to take our distribution tool or people call it a leveling tool this is also from crema i am not sponsored by crema i just have their products because i really like them this is a two-in-one it's a leveler slash um tamp as well 
I do not use the tamp because I like the tamp. I like to use my own pressure, which you can set it for your own pressure, but I just like to get the feel for it. So that's why I don't use the other side. But this is extremely heavy and that's what you want because it's pushing the beans down or it's pushing the, uh, the grind coffee down into the portafilter without actually having a tamp yet. Uh, tamping is um, widely debated in the coffee world saying that you need 30 pounds of pressure, 50 pounds of pressure. However, uh, I have not found that to be true. I have put very little pressure and I've also put a lot of pressure and I still pull just the same amount of shot or just as decent amount of shot as I would if I were to put, put 30 uh, pounds of pressure. So with that being said, uh, everything else up to, so getting every all the grounds into the portafilter uh, basket evenly and also distributing it is the most important part. Tamping pressure is not as important, but I still tamp it and I put it as about 30 pounds. Uh, you don't have to actually measure it. Some people put it on a scale, but that's not necessary. Just do a little quarter turn and lift straight up. You don't have to sit here and polish it off because you could disturb the puck and that's bad when pulling a shot of espresso. Number one thing that I'm gonna preach on this channel is you wanna make sure you flush your machine before you pull a shot. This is just so that you get the most, you get the most accurate temperature when pulling your shot. It's gonna pull for a better shot in the long run. You don't have to worry about this because uh, the Bremen Breeze Express does a good job with temperature management. However, if you own a machine that does not, then it's, you have to uh, surf your temperature, which you're going to have to flush in order to get up to the right amount of temperature. So what we're going to do is we're just going to heat these mugs up over here. And you want to pull your, you want your shot of espresso to go into a warm cup because it's going to help for uh, your espresso and it's not going to shock the espresso as well. So we're just going to line this up in there, turn it on. And I like to have this, these kind of scales, I like to have them off, put the thing on and then turn it on. So that way it actually goes and tears to zero. Sometimes with these scales, because they're cheaper, if you put it on there while it's on and then you press tear, it'll still start adding up weight when you just teared it and it should not do that. So let's go ahead and pull our shot. Like I said, we are gonna do a double shot, but it's gonna go a single shot into each cup. And we're gonna start this timer as soon as we see the first drop hit. Some people also do it during the pre-infusion. So right now, as you can see, the shot looks absolutely beautiful. It's coming down real slow, which is what we want. No air, no air pockets in there, so the beans aren't too, too fresh. Yes, that is a thing. And we are looking pretty good. So right now we have, we're looking for 38 grams. All right, so we hit 40 grams. You guys, it's hard for you guys to see that, but we hit 41 grams in 31 seconds, which what we are aiming for, that was perfect. So normally I like to do a one to two. So if you do 18 grams in, you get 36 grams out, you yield 36 grams. However, uh, I encourage you guys to look at your whole bean coffee because this roaster recommends that for every 18 grams that you dose in, that you yield 45. So it's not a quite one to two ratio. So this is just for follow suggestion ratios to enjoy the best coffee uh, or the best taste of our coffee. So. Also, I encourage you guys, like I said, to read that and to also read the notes that you are trying to hit. So when you're dialing in your espresso, uh, you can taste the notes. This one has dark chocolate, cherry, and brown sugar. Um, can I taste that? No, but I'm also not a expert in espresso trier outer person either, if I even said that right. But, you know, if you can taste it, you have, you're one step ahead of me because it just tastes like espresso. I'm not a huge fan of espresso, but I love milk-based beverages and I love adding it to all different kinds of drinks. Like earlier when we added it to hot cocoa, which was delicious. Make sure you go out and check that video. Uh, it was delicious. Definitely try it again. My wife absolutely loved it. She hasn't even actually tried it yet, but I'm just saying that anyways. I'm sure she's going to love it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get our milk ready, steamed up. Actually... Let's go ahead and 
put it into this pitcher. So I don't really steam milk in this pitcher, but you know, let's just give it a try. All right, so with the Breville, you gotta wait a second just so you get as less water out of the steam on as possible. You want it to be steam, not water. All right, that is good. And by the way, if you guys haven't seen my recently uploaded video on the installation of the Crema steam lever, make sure you go check that out. Uh, absolutely love it. I think it just changes the whole dynamic of the uh, espresso machine. And uh, it's just a great touch. Crema did a great job in adding that steam wand. Um, I am gonna leave this one original, just so people at home, if you have a Bravo Barista Express and you don't have one, I want to be able to problem solve or anything with the original espresso machine. So that's another reason why I have two of them. I will upgrade, I'll be upgrading this one to whatever crema or any other kind of products come out and leaving this one quote unquote stock. All right, this pitcher is a little bit more difficult to steam your milk in. Uh, as you can see, I'm overflowing a little bit over here, but that's okay, you know? I don't like to hide my flaws. I'll show you guys. I'll probably start running over the edge here pretty soon, but that's okay. No one is perfect, and I am far from it. Oh man, we are about to go overboard here. All right, what I am about to do, I do not recommend. So do not do this at home if you wanna try pouring good latte art. And what I'm about to do is transfer the milk twice, just because I did have a little trouble in managing my microphone still looks okay but you can tell that foam's a lot thicker than i want it to be still looks good everything looks good on camera so i am going to mix it in oh got a little pour over on the side but that is okay all right i'm gonna go ahead and just mix that pour it back into here that's about half i would say all right now let's pour our latte art. Give it a little tap. Stir it up. And let's start pouring. All right, on to the next one. That one was okay, not the greatest, but it will do. Oh man, that is okay. We will just cover that up, act like that didn't happen. All right, so I would say for the little eight ounce cups like this, these are also not neutral cups. Uh, if you guys haven't already and you guys are interested in coffee and you own a Breville Barista Express currently, definitely go out and check Hoon's webpage. Uh, his, uh, his YouTube is absolutely great. His content is awesome. Um, he is just definitely an inspirational person. Uh, if, you, if you guys want to see content and you want to look at a lot of videos, he has a lot uploaded. His knowledge is extremely high, so definitely go give him a check. And uh, I will go ahead and try these out. Pretty good. Yeah, so uh, for usability for eight ounce cups, I would definitely go with a more wide uh, pitcher spout. That's just my preference. Uh, but when you are going into like the 12 and 20 ounce uh, cups like this, I would definitely go with a bigger jug and also with a narrower spout. Just my opinion, just what I am uh 
figuring out as I do more latte art for you guys because I want to improve my skills. And yeah, that's about it. So if you want to watch further content and you want to request any kind of videos, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. And I will make sure to make that video for you guys at home because I am here for you. This is a family channel. I want to make this a family. I love each and every one of you. If you guys can hit that like and subscribe button down below, hit that bell for post notifications so you never miss one of my videos again. I truly appreciate it. And as always, my name is Dylan Licka with Dylan Tom Espresso Bar. This is Late Night Latte Art with Dylan Licka. And I will see you guys in my next video. Peace.